Good morning, everybody. This is Nancy, the Disorderly Stitcher. It is Sunday, February 19th, and this is take two. Um, I hope everybody is well. So, um, yeah, this is episode 21. Again, um, if you notice by my banner, why you shouldn't film a floss tube on Friday night. Um, yeah, don't do this when you're tired and you don't have patience for the technology and you try something new and it doesn't work. Even though Mr. and Mrs. The Camping Stitcher helped me tremendously. No. Okay. So what I tried to do was do it on my phone and get it from my phone to YouTube. And actually I wanted to put it in my get it from my phone to my computer so I could, you know, put my, my banner at the front and the, the end picture at the back with all my, you know, social media stuff. And uh, I was up till midnight, which was not good because I was up at 4.30 a.m. So yeah, it's not going to work. So I'm hoping that we have a good time on this laptop. Um, I think that's the way it's going to be. You know, I was talking to my daughter who is a film video major. Um, and you know, I said, I'm going to need some help. She said, mom, unless you're going to invest in a true video camera, you're not going to get great color. Um, you know, iPads and things were not meant to do long videos. And so you're, I said, fine, I'll deal with it. And so if you want to know what a color is, or if you want a better picture, let me know, email me, and I will be glad to take a picture and send it to you with my camera on my phone. Okay. So anyway, um, I'm going to show you some haul. I'm going to show you some progress. I'm going to talk about plans and, um, we'll just take it from there and see how it goes. All right. The last video that I dumped Friday night was um, about 45 minutes long. So we'll see if we get there again. Um, I've already rambled for two and a half minutes. So yes. Um, the other thing that was on my mind was grading essays. I was about a week overdue. Excuse me. Oh, well, my hair's sticking up. So you just have to live with that. That looks funny. Anyway, um, so they were, I'd had them in my backpack for about a week and I was like, I have to do this. So, um, yeah, came home a little early on Friday and sat down and I had graded one group Thursday night, um, graded one group Friday afternoon, graded another group Saturday morning, um, sat and stitched with Chris, the camping stitcher for a while via Facebook messenger, went to Eddie's game last night, basketball game, came home and I was like in the zone. So I graded the last set and I'm just pumped, 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 pumped. Um, so you can tell what COVID has done to these kids, the, the, the writing ability of students. Um, they lost a lot of skill building. And so, um, some of them did well. Many of them did not. They, they don't want to take the time to follow directions. Um, we live in the land of instant gratification now. Um, you know, I can click something and boom, it's there. Well, that's not writing. So it was a learning process, which is another reason why I have learned to throw some extra credit at them. Um, unfortunately, some of them choose not to do it. But anyway, so with that being said, how are you? How's your weather? Those of you that have been in line in the lines of these storms, um, I hope you are doing well. They seem to keep going around us. They'll go to the north. They'll go to the south. We've had maybe three inches of snow this winter. Um, it's supposed to be up to 70 degrees on Thursday. And then it'll cool off again. It's crazy town. So, you know, I told that to Eddie and he's like, yeah, I get to wear shorts to school. I'm like, well, let's see about that. All right. So what's been up? Well, I'll show you my book of days. First of all, 
I have it all prettified with stickers and pink and red and you know all that good stuff. So there's my book of days. I hope you can see it. Um, I can't see you, so you'll have to trust. I guess I trust the camera. Yep. So I have some starts. Um, I don't have any new finishes from what I showed you last time. Um, yeah. I've made one whip go goal this month. I have two more days on the other one, so I need to work on that. Okay. So let's put that over there. Oh. All right. So where are we going to start? Well, let's start with progress. Progress is always good. So this was one of my whip go goals. This is Isabella Jackson. Let me find the picture. Um, I hope you can see it. By the scar by Scarlet House. This is one of the first samplers I bought when I went back into stitching about a year or so ago. Um, and honestly, I love doing it because the border is repetitive. And once you get the pattern, it's not a problem. So I'm trying to do it. It's broken up into like seven, eight, nine pages, nine pages. Okay. So what I'm trying to do is do one page at a time and, you know, double checking and making sure I have the rhythm of the border and everything like that. And so my fingers are crossed that when I get around to the other side, it fits. If it doesn't, I will cry. But anyway, um, I do apologize. I did not take it out of the hoop, but this is the one that I had spent an evening on, on the green, on the border. And then the next night realized that the working copy I had made for some reason, like had like folded in on itself and, um, I was a stitch short. So I had to rip that out and then I had to do it again. And so anyway, long story short, this is where I am. I got the green and the flowers and I started in on the yellow. I don't know. What do you want to call that? Curly Q and, um, the orange. So that was my one whip go goal. My goal was to do five, to touch it for five days. And I did. Um, so yeah, I'm pleased with that. I would like to see if I can get this done this year, but we shall see. I keep it in my, um, it's done on 36 count ale that I bought at Stitches Unlimited in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And I keep it in my witchy, orange witchy dot dot goose bag. I just fell in love with that. And these are the threads. They're all DMC. They're pretty full. I guess you can see those pretty well. I guess the camera's not too bad. Oh, look, there's orange thread. So, yep. So one thing I'm trying now to do is not put my charts right up against the plastic in the um, bag because I have seen others where they have said that the, um, after a while, maybe, I don't know if because they're in the sun or because, you know, they just sit packed against each other, the print will transfer onto the vinyl. So that's just a thought. Okay. So the other one that I started, um, another one, the other one, another one is, um, Prairie house sampler by with a needle and thread, Brenda Gervais. I just love the Browns and the blues. I don't know why that just totally intrigued me. So I'm working on that top border with the tiny little flower. And these are the threads. You can tell I was using the light blue. I just love them. Dublin, Dublin Bay, blue corn, gentle arts, antique lace, gentle arts, wood smoke, trail, uh, call it class color works, trail dust, weeks, dye works, sage, onion skins, class color works, old money, class color works and hazelnut class color works. 
and I'm trying to use one of my little pouches that I bought from Starlight Stitch Co. Um, I'm in love with these things. One of these days I'm going to make my own when I have time to slow down and do it. But sorry, there's my, yeah, they are awesome. And I have my Charlie Brown needle minder. If anybody knows me, I love Charlie Brown. I guess that's because I grew up in the 60s. You know, it was like a rite of passage to watch Charlie Brown every year. So again, it's still in the hoop, but this is how far I've gotten. And again, it's a border and when you get the rhythm, you just keep moving. Um, hang on. This is done on so many things in my little pile of stuff. This is done. What is this thing called? Fairy house sample. <laughs> ah. Um, yes, this is done on gin and tonic. I have no idea. It was in my stash. I honestly don't remember where I got it from and it's 36 counts. So if anybody knows who made a linen called gin and tonic, please let me know because I, um, I've never seen it. You know, I did, I tried to do a search and I couldn't find it. And, um, yeah. So there you go. So that's that. And I made, I don't know if I showed you guys this last week or not, but I made this little project bag, um, it has a brown interior and then it has coffee fabric on the back. Um, this is an Elizabeth Ann can stitch tutorial. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, not a problem. Okay. So then, um, I also made, I'm going to show you this, but I don't have the project started. I also made, um, this project bag again with Elizabeth Ann can stitch. So it has this cool measuring tape thread inside, um, or fabric inside, excuse me. And then this on the back. So I made that last week. Honestly, the, 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 the time consuming part is getting the, the pieces cut. Once you have the pieces cut, the sewing's not a problem. Um, I will say that if you don't have a Teflon foot for your sewing machine, then make sure you hang on to the tissue paper because your metal foot will stick to the plastic and the plastic will stick to your sewing machine bed. So usually what I do is if I have the plastic, when you're putting the, um, the placket here onto the plastic, the plastic has to slide across your sewing machine bed and it will stick. So, um, I just take a piece of paper and put it under the plastic and then it slides. So that's my two cents for that. Um, another one I started, uh, <laughs> I had help. Um, Chris, the camping stitcher posted a link to a video of a gal that had done a hands across the sea and tong Ufendel using DMCs. Um, it's charted to use Swad LJ. And I hate to say it, but I don't know if I'm to the point where I always want to put in that much money for silks. Um, that's a lot. So anyway, I was going to use DMC anyway, and Chris posted something about it. And, you know, me being the snarky, sarcastic individual that I am, um, I said, tell me when you want to start. She said, okay, let's do it. So I spent, um, not this past Friday night, but Friday night before Thursday or Friday night, kidding Anton Ufendel. Now I had decided she, whoops, sorry about that. She has, um, a sister and I also have that chart as well. And I wanted them both done on the same fabric. 
and I wasn't sure what I wanted. Plus when I find something I thought I wanted it, I couldn't get it because you know, the ever present supply chain issue issue. So I finally looked at, um, Roxy Flosco in Canada and I found parchment. It's sort of a off white. Okay. And I said, can you cut me two pieces? Cause I want to do it for the Ufendel sisters. And they said, sure, you know, they'll, if they'll cut you anything. Um, so it's done on parchment. I started it on parchment from Roxy Flosco and I got one flower done when we were sitting there stitching one day. Now I know Chris has gotten into the border. I swear that woman doesn't eat or sleep, but, um, yeah. So she got, she's on her border and, um, this, this is going to be a while cause she's, she's big. She's, um, here's a better picture. That's the centerfold. <laughs> That's the kind of centerfold I like. Um, she is on 40 count. I think this is 40 count 36 or 40. Anyway, she's going to be somewhere around anywhere from 16 to 21 inches wide and tall. So yeah. And if you look at it, the little viney thing in the middle is satin stitch. Yeah. I didn't know that when I bought it. Oh, well. So, and some of it's over one, like these flowers are over one. If I just flash the chart, I do apologize. But anyway, so here's the threads. Like I said, they're all DMC. They're pretty. I put them on um, some, some of them on floss drops that I got from Pink Daisy Stitch. She made them. They're cute little Valentiny birds. And then she used this. She found it on um, just a Google search. And so I did the same thing. It's an old um, Clark's ad. I just thought that was cute. And I have some of them on some floss drops that I got from Jessica, the Sweetwater Stitcher. And I also have one on a floss bitty from that quarter shop. I think I need to turn off this. Does that help? I don't know. Anyway, I have a little ring light that I bought when I did Zoom calls with my kids, Zoom class, in the time of Doom. But you can see how big this fabric is. That's huge, huge, huge. So that was another one. And then I think we're going to call Chris is going to be renamed Chris, the camping enabling stitcher. Um, we started talking about Hawk Run hollow and she said, well, I started, I started villages. I said, Oh, okay. I have that. And, um, I had bought it from a gal off of stash unloading and it came with all, she sent me all the DMC and, um, a mystery fabric. I don't know what it is and it's nice, but I don't know what it is. And honestly, I had writ written it down and I can't find it. So that's why I'm disorderly. So anyway, um, I kitted it up and, um, I didn't like what I had chosen for the fabric. So it just sat there for about a week. So this is, excuse me for rattling and squishing and crunching. This is the village of Hawk Run Hollow. I love, sorry, love the salt box. Anyway, so the floss list on this 
is probably longer than your arm. Again, I'm using DMC. Yes. And originally I had pulled straw linen by Weeks Dye Works. And there was one yellow gold that was probably going to blend in. But it was only used on this house with the stripes. So it would have been surrounded by other colors. But I just couldn't get it out of my head that I didn't like it. So I had gotten a piece of needle and flax Alcott off of Stash Unloading. 36 count. And I thought, you know what, this will work. So yesterday afternoon while we were talking, I started outlining one of the blocks. Yes. So it's a big one. That's probably another half yard piece. I think it is a half yard piece. And I was sitting here doing it in hand and you know what? I liked it. So here's all the colors. You know, and some of these might only show up like a little bit, but you know, it's still, it's Budimus. Budimus. Doesn't look really good right there, but trust me, it's Budimus. So I decided to call it a year long <laughs> instead of a so long because I know that if I had all the time in the world, it would probably take me a good month to do one of those blocks if I had nothing else to do. As it is, I know some of these are going to probably take two months. So you know what? I'm just going to do when I have time. When I'm sitting here stitching, you know, talking to Chris or we're having a Zoom stitch or something like that, that's going to be what I'm going to do because I like doing it in hand. I can sit here with my um, little desk magnifying lamp and I can stitch and it's great. Love it. So that's what I've been working on. Um, I want to make a couple more bags. I have... I have the fabric. Um, oh, that bag. That's another new one I did. Um, it has an orange interior and then pumpkins on the back. I love pumpkins. I love pumpkin pie. So I have a couple more to do with the same fabric. Um, yeah. I will just, you know, I'll go places and I'm like, oh, that's cute. And I'll buy half a yard of each one and boom, it's a bag. So I have a lot of those half a yard of each one and boom, it's a bag. S sets to go. Um, so let's talk about haul because, you know, I'm also Nancy the prolific buyer. So I have this half jelly roll. It's called Joy in the Journey by Danny Mogstead. I found this came in a um, sew sampler box from Fat Quarter Shop last year. And if you're interested in getting, you know, little packs of fabric and a pattern and some notions, it's it's well worth the money. Um, I was in it for about three or four months and decided, you know, I'm not going to no, I It's just not something that I wanted to continue simply because I felt like I was getting these things and I wasn't using them right away. And I wanted to put that money towards something else. So that's just me. But um, anyway, I got this half jelly roll. Now, jelly rolls are, I think, a Moda name, but these are called... I think Riley Blake's calls theirs roly polies. But anyway, they're two and a half inch strips pre cut with every fabric from a fabric line. Okay. There you go. 
So I have that and I bought a half yard fabric. So eventually this is going to be a project bag. Um, I just thought it was pretty nice, soft pinks and blues and greens with a little black thrown in for good measure because black makes everything else pop. So that's going to be a project bag someday. I also got my April installment for month to month from Fat Quarter Shop um, by Priscilla and Chelsea, Stitching with the Housewives. Uh, I get the color and cotton. Now, this one I love. And this one I can see myself doing and loving because this is my birthday month. And I do love daffodils. So. Anyway, because it's been so warm, my daffodils are already starting to sprout. Um, a lot of my daffodil bulbs are actually bulbs that were his grandmother's, Kevin's grandmother's. They're getting old. Um, they need to be dug up and probably gotten rid of. They're getting scraggly. Um, but with my bad knee, I know I can't get down on the ground and do it. Um, at least not very long and um, I'm about ready to the point where I'm gonna hire somebody to come in and do the landscaping because it's just not my thing yeah but anyway um, there's a lot of the bulbs that are so close together they need to be separated and moved and but I love daffodils so yeah so that I got um, I also got three pieces from Hollis Hands Creates. I got three fat quarters of um, Fox and Rabbit because I didn't know which one I liked for this one pattern. And, um, you know, why not? When you can get three, why stop at one? So the first one is Mayflower. Now it's a very, it, it reminds me of the parchment. It's very just off-white. I don't know if you can see it get closer and it washes out and then I got a piece of salt bush it's more of a gray um, there you go. and I got a piece of flannel flower now this one has sort of a bluish green gray modeling to it okay so I don't know what I'm gonna, which one I'm gonna choose, but it's for, and I can't remember if I showed you this last week or not. Chris, the enabling camping stitcher, was working on this, and of course I was like, it's red. So this came from um, Homespun Prim by Lori, Lori Ripley, and. It calls for, I think, Anchor. Well, I don't have Anchor. I'm going to use DMC. And it's only like five colors or something like that. And of course, a lot of red. Red's my favorite color. So, yeah, DMC 815. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five colors. So, and it's only 103 square. So I'm, I'm pumped about that one. Um, I can see, you know, you do that, you outline that house and then you're good to go. You know, um, I would probably figure out how to do the windows and the door first, simply because, um, I, I, I have read and have done the light colors first so that the red, the white, if you do the red first, I think the white pulls the red into it, and I don't want that to happen. So anyway, I just love it. So that'll be a start one of these days. I also bought from, um, I'm going to call her my friend, Leslie up in um, Vermont. Essex Junction. Um, she has, uh, she advertises on the um, Stash Unloading because she's one of the moderators. Um, 
she also has an Etsy shop, I believe, one of a kind heirlooms. Anyway, she will post chunks of fabric and, you know, add to cart. So I got a yard of 36 count country mocha because, you know, country mocha goes with everything. Can't have too much of that. My kids are laughing at me now. So you cut back on quilt fabric, mom, but you didn't cut back on anything else. Yeah, well, that's not my problem. That'll be your problem. I also got the newest installment in the Country Cottage Needleworks Big City Christmas. The toy store. I love the little nutcracker. I don't know how big these are. Um, it would be nice if these could be done. I don't know if they could be done over one and be made into ornaments. Um, Fifty-nine by seventy-one, three and a half by four and a half. They could, yeah, they could be. They could be ornaments. I mean, they're not any much. They're not any bigger than one of um, the housewives' um, tear trade tidbits or whatever they are. Tidbit tadas. I don't know. Whatever they are. So anyway, that's a possibility. Um, I purchased, you know, there's some days when I just, I'm like, okay, I'm going to let Denise at dot dot goose make me a bag because she does wonderful bags. And, um, so I saw this one on her Etsy and I just fell in love with it. The blue. So I have no idea what's going in there. Something will. So that's that. I got my latest installment of my classic color works um, floss club from fat quarter shop. Now I was watching bougie stitchers last night while I was grading. I need something in the background while I'm grading and I can, you know, mindlessly listen and read essays at the same time. And Jenny said that she had or will be stopping some of her subscriptions because you know it's like if you really want the thread you can go get it and I'm like yeah that makes sense um plus I have gotten myself into the color and cotton all color thread club and I'm thinking about doing the primitive slash neutral one as well but anyway something had to give. So I stopped my week's dye works subscription and I stopped my color, uh, my classic color works subscription from fat quarter shop. So anyway, this came in the mail the other day. So I have avocado sort of a gold. You can't really see it. And I have baby blanket, which is like a light pinkish blue. I'm sorry. It's all washed out and aunt Marie's violet. I know some of these I have and Auntie D this is like a deep blue. I love that. And autumn spice. I'm sure I have that and Argyle socks, which is like a slate blue gray purple. There's some purple in there. So anyway, um, yeah, so I won't be getting those squishies in the mail anymore and that's okay. Um, you know, if I really need a color, I'll order it and then I'll just wait or I'll stitch part of it that I don't need that color for. And then I will, when I get it, that's the way it works. Right. Right. I also thought about this. I also got, um, there we go. I also got, um, and I can't, I wish I could show you this, but the picture wouldn't have printed right. But there was a Quaker at Tinsel Stitches called Quaker Nature, and it's really long. And anyway, I bought that off of Etsy. But I got a notification on Instagram that um, Michelle from Mama Loves You GB had reproduced another sampler and stuck it up there, and it was red. So, of course, I had to go 
and get it. And I'm sure you could see this in the sheet protector. I found a whole bunch of sheet protectors in a desk drawer. So now I'm going to put all my PDFs that I print in there. I'm a paper girl. I hadn't decided if I could do this on a screen. And really the only screen I have is my laptop. And I'm not going to go out and buy an iPad. I just, I don't know. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. So anyway, um, this is A, A. Burn Hope 1895. Um, Mama Loves You GB. So, can you see it? It's red. Yes, red. I love red. Okay. And she's having a sale. If you buy two, you get 10% off. Well, you know you got to save 10%, which means I had to buy another one. So I bought Mary A.G. Small, 1863. This one's red and green, and I think that's black. This one I would consider doing in silk, simply because there's only three colors. But that's cute. See? Nice and simple. And like I said before, the thing about alphabets is, you know, you do it, and then you, you know, they're easy. They're easy peasy lemon squeezy. That's the word of the day. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Yes. I also pulled out Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow thinking I was going to kit that up, but I think one hawk run at a time is, you know. Let me draw the line. Um I cleaned up in here. Which was kind of amazing. Um, you probably couldn't tell, but I did. <laughs> um, I started going through some charts that I have finished or bought two of, um, or I know I'm not going to stitch and I'm don't know what I'm going to do with them yet. I haven't decided. I might then put them on the stash and loading group. I don't know. I don't know. I might try to do a D stash in, um, on Instagram. I've never done that before. So that's something for me to consider, um, in the future. So, yeah, I can't think of anything else. How did this get so short? compared to the other day. Weird. So plans, um, just working on my hawk, just working on these things as I can. I don't beat myself up over the head because, you know, with a full-time job and a family, I just do what I can when I can. And if I get 20 minutes in, I'm good. Um, you know, it's my therapy. Um, I do want to this summer take some time to start. I have a AccuQuilt studio cutter. And um, like if you look right there, whoops, there, those are three small dies that will cut squares um, two and a half, two and one and a half. And yes, there's some waste, but. If I can take some pieces of fabric, fat quarters, and put them in there and cut squares so I can make scrappy quilts, that would be great. Because um, what I do when I sew is like I have a basket of, right now I have the one and a half inch squares down. And I will. Uh, I will take just two squares, any squares, match them up, sew them together. You know, before I put bigger pieces through and I get what are called twosies and then I turn twosies into foursies. And I have my scrappy pieces started and I have boxes and I don't know if you can see it in there, boxes of twosies and foursies and singles and so knowing how much I love scrap quilts and I have some running around up in my brain, I want to do that. Um, so even with the waste, cutting around the, the fat quarters will be easier on my hands 
and um, I'll get to get through some of this fabric so it's more usable. Um, I also have some scraps I need to cut up into tiny little pieces. I want to make some more project bags um, because you know you can never have too many project bags. Um, I'm sure my husband would disagree with that, but okay. Story time. When we were first married and our oldest was little, um, that's that was like 1986-87. And that's when I first started into, you know, I was into counted cross stitch. And I would go to the, the local craft store and um, I would buy a chart and fabric and the thread. And he would, you know, what are you going to do with all these charts? What are you going to do? These and finally I turned around and I know he, he is a antique gun enthusiast. He does, he used to do, um, I don't even remember what they were called, but, um, he would have shooting matches. Okay. And I finally turned around and I said, look, now this tells you how old this is. My $5 chart I can stitch it over and over and over again. Your $5 box of primers are shot once and they're gone. Yeah, that conversation died right there. So, you know, I mean, yeah, I've got stuff. I got, I got to do this. I got to go through stuff and, and either de-stash it or use it. So that's, that's one of my goals this summer is try and get some stuff done. And I have so many scrap strips. It's ridiculous because, um, I save as much as possible. So after I'm done making a quilt, if I have an inch and a half or a two inch or a two and a half inch or a three and a half inch piece, I stick it in a drawer and I use it in a scrap quilt. Well, the problem is I've stuck so many strips in my drawers that my drawers, um, the glides, the screw stripped out of the wood. So now he's in the process of trying to figure that out and fix it. So, um, yeah, I have a lot of things I have to use up and, you know, my daughters have made it clear that they don't want it. So yes, Beth might take it simply because she's the one that sews and makes baby quilts, but she doesn't want all my handwork. She said, I don't want that. So, Oh, while I'm thinking about it, somebody asked, a question and I said I would share these today about the sticker books that I found um, I got all of these off of Amazon um, so you know sometimes they go on sale so keep an eye out for them put them on your wish list and then you'll get an email if that's what you choose to do this is the first one I got um, it's the antiquarian sticker book over 1,000 exquisite Victorian stickers now, I will say that this one has had some really has some really cool ones in, but it also has some weird ones. And um yeah, I'm not quite sure what I do with them. Um Yeah, like this squid thing, you know, it's not going in my book of days. And these are actually, if you peel them, you can see I started to, but they work up into different shapes. So I've never really figured these out either, but that's the antiquarian sticker book. So then when I was watching, I think it might've been Brendan Moore or somebody else. Um, I saw this one, the antiquarian sticker book Imaginarium. It's purple. Over 1,000 exquisite and enchanting stickers. Now, this one has stickers that I think are a little more useful, I guess is the word. Um, again, there are some weird ones, but, you know, yeah, I mean, if you're really into pink, there's like a whole pink page. There you go, Alicia. That one's for you. And, um, 
You know, like there's this 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 whole section of Valentines. So they'll be around for a while. Um, there's alphabets, which is where I got the big letters for my calendar pages. Um, trying to look for one of the weird pages. Again, where am I going to put jellyfish? I'm not into jellyfish. I don't like jellyfish. So there's that one. Then I found these three, and this one's called Loads of Ephemera, an Unforgettable Vintage Sticker Book. Now, I'm not saying this is, you know, perfect either. You know, I'm not into crabs, but it has some pretty, you know, like here's some flowers. So when the flowers start to bloom, or there's some butterflies when I start seeing the butterflies um, and birds. We have red winged blackbirds showing up and my husband said that he read somewhere that, you know, it's not truly spring until the red winged blackbirds show up. Now, I don't know if this red winged blackbird got lost, you know, if it's a male and he didn't ask for directions or what, but he showed up before the robin did. This one is called Bunches of Botanicals. Um... You know, I've got, you know, mushrooms, I'm not into mushrooms, but they're springy. Um, you know, there's some flowers and some tiny little butterflies. Um, oh, here's for Priscilla and Olivia at Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. There's some hydrangea. I have to laugh because, you know, everybody's talking about hydrangea. And we, when we first moved into this house, it was his grandmother, grandparents' house. There's a huge hydrangea in the back right along the house. And I told my husband to dig it out. He had to get the pickaxe and the shovel to dig it out. And last summer I said, you know, maybe we should put in a hydrangea. And he just looked at me. I said, well, that was 20 years ago. Let it go. I don't know if I'm going to be getting another hydrangea. And then I found this Christmas one. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with all these Christmas stickers, but, you know, they're cool. Like, they even have two from stickers. So if I got stuck and I didn't have enough two from stickers, I can pull them out of here. But I just love the look. This one here reminds me of Meet Me in St. Louis with Judy Garland. That reminds me of Tootie. Um, you know, there's Santa. There's something about the older Santa representations rather than the Coca-Cola representation. Um, but then there's also some, you know, just more modern looking decorate stickers that you could put all over your page. So Christmas is your thing. You know, I love this one too, called Hot Cocoa. So, you know, you could use those in July if you do Christmas in July. Um, more eclectic than... Um, Spiritual, I think, sticker collections. There's some angels. Oh, who's into angels? Somebody I was watching is into angels. Was that Laura? From Brenda and Laura? I'm not sure. But somebody's into angels. So anyway, those are my sticker books. I hope that answers the question of whomever was asking. Um... Oh, and then I have to publicly apologize to Rachel. She won one of my last giveaways that I did. And I was sure that I had sent it. And then, of course, the British postal strike went, and I just thought, okay, it's lost somewhere in the British postal system. And as I was cleaning yesterday, lo and behold, I found it. It had slid behind the cabinet 
and I felt so bad. Now she has been so forgiving and so understanding. And, and so, yes, it's ready to go. I need to get an envelope and put it in there and mail it to the UK. So, you know, um, I wanted to share that because I wanted to offer a reminder that, uh, those of us that do floss tube are putting ourselves out there and not because we want recognition and not because all of us want to make money on our YouTube channel. We're putting things out there that we love to do and we love to share. Um, I'm saying this because many of you may know that Carol Saltbox Titcher in her last video shared that someone or someone's um, were saying not so kind things to her um, and about, you know, her carrying on with her husband and other things and not showing her, her stitches long enough. And you could tell that Carol was hurt and I don't blame her. Um, but please, you know, please be kind in your comments. We're not perfect. We don't claim to be perfect. We're not authorities. Um, you know, if I were perfect, my hair wouldn't be sticking up like it is right now. Um, but you know what, this is who I am. And, uh, I'll go to school looking like this and this is life. Um, so I made it to 51 minutes with this being said, I hope that all of you have a wonderful week, um, or not a couple weeks, probably won't be back for a couple weeks. Um, and you know, enjoy your stitching, give yourself some grace. If you make a mistake, you know, in the long run, if you can fudge it, fudge it. Nobody's going to know, but you, unless you put a big neon sign there and say, look at my mistake. Says the one who doesn't like to make pies because she can't flute an edge, an edge of high crust worth diddly squat. And my kids say, mom, we're going to eat it. It doesn't have to be pretty. So, um, yes. Take care of yourself. Keep your fingers crossed that, that spring comes sooner than expected and we don't get any big snowfalls around here. Um, those of you, again, that have been hit by all these snows, um, best wishes to you. I hope you are doing well. And we will see you soon. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.